What's up, guys? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Also, please smash that like button on the video and enjoy the show. I was just going to let the whatever, the five or six grand slide. But now that you did this to the place, like I'm at least going to let every landlord that you are going to apply to see it on your record. In the media, as a country, like we're too afraid to say like, oh, we're just going to like, and the 1% is important. A 1% leak can still mess up a house. But the 99% leak is really where we need to look. And for some reason, you can't say it. You can't talk about it. And especially two white guys can't talk about it. And who knows how many of these kids do have guns on them. And it's like, how is a kid supposed to learn in a place like this? Yeah. They're, they're, set up, they're set up to fail. I mean, it's. I think about that often. I'm almost like, is some of this by design? I think it was a lot in the past. Like redlining was a really real thing. Can you explain that to people? Redlining is, well, I think it was specifically black folks, but I don't know if it applied to other races too. But basically like you couldn't move out of certain areas. Like you couldn't mm -hmm. move into the white areas or the nice areas. And I think that was a practice that happened into the late 80s which is just around the corner in the terms of the history book. And so then people are stuck. And then like, let's take a Midwest town like Milwaukee or Flint or Detroit. A lot of those, a lot of those folks had their grandparents now were, were doing well. They were middle class. They worked at the factory. They worked at the plant. Mm. All those jobs went overseas to China, Mexico. Yeah. And all of a sudden there's literally no jobs except for fast food work. Or if you want to do like the most popular jobs in Milwaukee in the hood right now are uh, adult home health care. So someone's grandpa that is poor right. lives on Medicaid. And then there's a house that, you know, three or four of those guys stay and someone watch them around the clock or daycares. And most of those workers, I see the check stubs because they apply to the properties I have. They're doing $13 an hour, $14 an hour. Rent is skyrocketing. So even a piece of shit place, like Milwaukee was actually, there's a book called Evicted that was written about Milwaukee. It's like the slumlord there's a lot of sl slumlord places in the country, but there's a lot of slumlords in Milwaukee. Mm. I've been, I've walked hundreds of properties in Milwaukee, so I've walked places that literally there's a like a hole in the ceiling, a big hole in the ceiling coming from through the second floor through the first floor because the landlord hasn't replaced the roof and it just they have a bucket mm. in their living room. Uh, places where it's like I've asked people, like people have asked, like, "Hey, are you renting? My sink hasn't worked in three weeks or three months," and it's like, "What the? How are you still paying rent?" There's slum lords, but then there's also like I've had really terrible tenants. I just paid uh, 17k to renovate a place that some lady beat the shit in six months. How did she beat the shit? She left her like I guess she left three dogs in there for like a week by themselves. Huh. So the carpet was ripped out. There was poop in every room, and she owed me four months of rent. So like I tried to work with her, so I lost that rent. I, I had to redo the oh, entire yeah. house. And there's you can't go. To, you can't take her to court. <laughs> I mean, I I usually don't do anything after the eviction. I actually try never, like I've never had a sheriff take someone out. Like that's that's really, it can go. But I always like, I give them so many options to get out of mm. it. Um, but her in particular is the only person I file a judgment against. Cause I'm like, when I walked in and I saw how bad she fucked the place up, I'm just like, I was just going to let the, whatever, the five or six grand slide. But now that you did this to the place, like I'm at least going to let every landlord that you are going to apply to see it on your record because right. that was bullshit, dude. It was terrible. Yeah, that's horrible. I mean, you know, people, especially when something's not there, is people get a little loose with things. But and that's, it was that's nice. a whole nother level. One of the things I try and do, I'll show you a couple of the pictures. Like, I'm going to show you a pictures of a property. What are you working with? An iPhone fucking 12. Eight there? It's one of the minis. <laughs> it's one of the minis. But oh, I'm you're there. a no case. Is that a case? Or? It's a little case. I probably should get a bigger one because yeah, I drop this like shit you, all the time. Yeah, it looks but like look, look at the pictures it. of this place. Um, that place is in a fucking war zone. There's oh, wait, literally I just clicked off it. Sorry. Let's see. Let's. Oh, this is also in a war zone. But they're right here. Eleventh. This and, is your place. Eleventh and Atkinson. Yeah. So outside, there's literally a wrap around a tree of some a memorial to a person that got shot out there. But this is beautiful. It's beautiful. So what our business model is in the hood is we'll buy a place that was like abandoned for three years or it's cheap. We might buy a place for thirty k, thirty five k put 25 into it, make wow. it the nice house on the block for a, a, a long ways away. And and then we get a person that wants to live there forever because they're like, holy shit, like this is on 11th and Atkinson. This is on 11th and Keefe. They move in and they're, they, like, they think it's a scam at first until they walk in. They're like, there's no way this place is here. Our bet is that people are going to want to love that place as much as we did and to, to invest into mm. it, that they're going to want to be there for years. So no turnover. They raise a family there. 
We'll see. I mean, we were burned by this other lady that... Yeah, that's not know, good. But, but you win some, you lose some. You win some, you lose some. But we, we've we've talked a little bit about you going to St. Louis. I think you've done a couple videos there, right? Yeah, most I hope it's city. not the most dangerous city in 2024 because I really don't want to go back there again. <laughs> <laughs> what, how do they measure it being most dangerous? Is it like homicides? Homicide. They'll have like murder rate per capita. Right. Yeah. So how do you fix a place like that? Is it fixable? That well, one that's like the multi-billion dollar question yeah. because I think like there's an attitude in the hood that I think um, I don't quite agree with, which is like, well, they don't want to see us win. I actually think the opposite. I think a lot of people want to see the hood do well. I don't think people want to live in areas where they're afraid of gunshots. They want to be afraid of robberies. They want to be afraid of reckless drivers. I think people want to see other people win because it's better for everyone if everyone's winning. How do you fix a place like that? Right now, it's like pushing a really heavy rock up a mountain because there's so many things you have to overcome to fix it. I think both of us probably subscribe to the ide ideology of like individual culture means a lot. Mm -hmm. And like that's the only thing you can control. Yes. Uh, I think people have to have a little bit of different priorities. Mm -hmm. But let's just say, okay, we'll cover in a, different, a few different areas. What can the government do? I don't think daddy government's ever going to fix anything. But if they can have a little bit of momentum be added, what I think they can do is recruit really good paying manufacturing jobs, plant jobs back to that area so that tons of people have high paying wages that they can eventually become homeowners or move out to a different area or at least stabilize an area because I'll reference that book evicted again in Milwaukee, one out of every nine single moms gets evicted every single year. So mm. you wonder why blocks are really crazy. There's no more like, oh, that's Mr. Smith, that's Mr. Johnson, that's Mr. whatever. People are all, it's like a shuffling deck. Yeah. So now you don't get time to, hey, why do I get to, why should I meet this new lady that just moved in? She's probably going to be gone in a year anyways. So now there's a lot more instability. So bring back really good jobs that people can be proud of, they can buy homes with, and they can be stable. Uh, I would say if I was, this is not a popular thing to say, especially if I was in the hood, but I would say... I would recruit like the best police people I could find. Mm. I'd make, and I'm not saying like the bruisers, but I'm saying people that aren't afraid and people that are going to hold people accountable. If you rob somebody, sorry, but you're going to get caught. If you kill somebody, the homicide solve rate in a city like Milwaukee, I think is like 40%. 40%. Chicago, I think it's like 30. Guys, if you're still watching this video and you haven't yet hit that subscribe button, please take two seconds and go hit it right now. Thank you. Isn't Milwaukee where they had like that viral sheriff video where he was talking about like all the murder? You know what I'm talking about? He was talking about like all the murders that happen and some reporter was bothering him about something. And then he just goes off on her? Yeah. Yes, that's Milwaukee. Can we pull up that video? Yeah. Let's see. It's going to be like Milwaukee sheriff goes off on reporter on YouTube. I want people to see this because this was, I want to say this was during some of the height of like the riots and stuff like that. Is that right? There were, I'll give you the color on why the riots happened. The riots happened. There was, there's a gentleman by the name of Sylvia Smith, who I don't know what he was wanted for, but he was in St. Louis. Yeah. yeah. No, no, in Milwaukee. Or, or, I'm sorry, in Milwaukee. Yeah. But we, he was in the street. Was the, he was a street guy. This was where what's his face got in trouble, right? Not George Floyd. No, no. What the fuck is it? Kyle Rittenhouse, right? Close, Kenosha, which he is like 40 Kenosha. minutes away. Okay, got it. A, a black cop shot a black guy, but the narrative was that got out is a white cop did it. So all of a sudden the city started burning down. And if you see the video on what this guy did to a police officer, he was running. He turns, reaches into his waistband, pulls out a gun, goes like this. As soon as he gets to like here, shot. It's it. Yeah. And there was a riot about that, which to me is like, <sighs> what is he? What is the cop supposed to do there, dude? Is he supposed to just take yeah, like submachine gun fire? <laughs> right. But like, come on, like, if the, maybe if, if the cop shot him in the back, I'd be like, you know what, that's messed up. Like any cop that does something really wrong, yeah, ta like take him to court, agreed. Have him service time. It's, it should be a case by case thing. But let's see. Uh, oh yeah, 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 we have the video. Certainly, up now. there are some folks in this community that are legitimately grieving, and we heard from them. We heard a lot of folks who believe the First Amendment only applies to them and took great pains to shout down anybody that disagreed with them. Uh, despite my ongoing disagreements with the police union, I have to say that their members tonight conducted themselves, I thought, with great restraint, given the ad hominem invective that was being invective that was being unleashed on uh, their work personally and the police department generally. So, you know, this is a controversy. This is a tragedy. I said it over and over again. It's a tragedy for the family. Tragedy for Officer Manning is a tragedy for the community. 
And I'm not blind to the fact that there's a lot of people lining up to take advantage of this uh, tragedy to flog their own uh, agendas, and that was clear tonight as well. The, uh, you're accused of saying something to one of the protesters or one of the people in the, in the stands. <laughs> he accused you of... You, I, you know, he was making so much noise, I have no idea what he's talking about. He's going into Clint Eastwood mode. He was insulted. Uh, too bad. Get off my What's your lawn. response to some of the people that thought you were being disrespectful by being on your phone and not being attentive to them? Well, I was on my phone, and yes, that's true. I was following developments with a five-year-old little girl sitting on her dad's lap who just got shot in the head by a drive-by shooting. And if some of the people here gave a good goddamn about the good victimization of people in this community line. by crime, I take some of their invective more seriously. The greatest racial disparity in the city of Milwaukee is getting shot and killed. Hello. 80% of my homicide victims every year are African-American. 80% of our aggravated assault victims are African-American. 80% of our shooting victims who survived their shooting are African-American. Now, they know all about the last three people that have been killed by the Milwaukee Police Department over the course of the last several years. There's not one of them can name last, one of the last three homicide victims we've had in this city. Now, there's room for no, I, I have a point on this. This, this has been support. this has been something I'm actually thinking about a lot lately, and it's like this, Julian. If I invited you to my house and you're a plumber, I have two leaks going on. There's one leak that 99% of the water is coming from, and there's one leak that 1% of the water That's is right. coming from. What are you going to fix? 99%. But we as a culture, we as a in the media, as a country, like we're too afraid to say like. Oh, we're just going to like, and the 1% is important. A 1% leak can still mess up a house. But the 99% leak is really where we need to look. And for some reason, you can't say it. You can't talk about it. Especially two white guys can't talk about it. But it's like, he just had 80% of them homicide victims in Milwaukee are black. I just looked at the, the most recent statistics. I think it's close to 95%. Oh my God. So it's like, there is something really crazy happening. And until we're comfortable looking at it in the mirror and saying what's going on and coming up with real solutions rather than just putting our pronouns in our emails. That's right. We're going to be in the same position, if not worse, years to come. It feels like there's an incentive for teams. We talk about this with different guests on the podcast all the time. It always comes up. But, you know, the profit is in the disparity of opinions. It's not in people having common ground because, you know, when people watch the news, they don't watch the news when everything's good outside. They watch the news when everything's to shit because like, oh, my God, what's going on? Right. Mm -hmm. Negativity sells. It's like I, I think what was the line? There's an old show, The Newsroom. Aaron, Aaron Sorkin wrote it. Is it, is it? Yeah, Aaron Sorkin wrote it. But he had he called it like tragedy porn yeah. or something like that. And that's exactly what it is. And so, you know, you have two sides where it may be on one end, you have some legitimate videos of like a cop doing something horrible yeah. to someone who may be black in that case. And yeah, like you said, they should be prosecuted the whole bit and we should give it attention. Yeah. On the other end, we have maybe like an epidemic of homicides that could be occurring in place X or place Y. And that should be given the same attention. But the 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 media sells on the old like Stalin quote of the tragedy of one death over the statistic of many. Mm -hmm. I think part of it though is like the injustice of being killed by a cop is so much worse than like a street dude killing a street dude because it's like, wait, you're the ones we're supposed to trust. You're the ones that are supposed to actually help justice. So when you do it, it's like a hundred times worse than yes. when some other guy does it. So like part of me does understand and there still are cases that i can't believe the cop never got in trouble like in new york i believe it was uh the guy that got choked to death eric garner for selling oh, cigarettes yeah. that was so bad he was selling cigarettes and the cops killed him and nothing happened to any of the cops so i think especially in the black community it's like you look at time after time after time with these high profile cases and nothing happens to the cops and it's just like well what the hell i thought i was an american too yeah. <sighs> you also have a pendulum too yeah right so you go you know, you get a Giuliani Bloomberg, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to move to de Blasio after that. Mm -hmm. And then the pendulum will swing back and forth. So you can kind of, you can never really get it like right here where there's mm -hmm. a good balance. It always swings hard one way or the other because when it's swinging one way, that creates people more pissed off. That's why whenever there's a president of, you know, Democrat or Republican in office, the other side gets the most noise because they're not in power and they mm -hmm. get the leverage to be like, fuck the man. Yeah. You know what I mean? That yeah. always happens. You look at every president since. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.